I have been looking for the perfect cycling camera for years. And this, the new Insta360 X3, it might be it. But before I can know for sure, I have five criteria it has to meet. It needs to be lightweight, easy to carry. It must have good image quality. It should be easily used while cycling and while editing. And the audio quality should match the video quality. And most importantly, it's gotta be super versatile. I need to be able to get a bunch of different camera angles out of it. I made a review of the previous generation, and if you saw all those camera angles, stick around, because there's a new one coming up. I haven't done it yet. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but it is gonna be entertaining. But first, we need to answer the question, is it lightweight? Now, I could tell you that the Insta360 weighs only 180 grams, which is way less than the 975 that my mirrorless camera weighs. That's also less than my phone in the phone case but those are just specs. I'm more interested in real world tests. So I'm gonna to try to get the fastest time up the Crest of Ivanhoe segment in Silver Lake. The current fastest time is one minute, seven seconds. My current fastest time is one minute, 47 seconds. <laughs> Way down in 20th place. But that was two years ago. I think I've gotten stronger since then. So I think I have a shot. Wish me luck. That was my second ever KOM. The first KOM I ever got was with <laughs> this, the last generation Insta360 ONE X2. I see a pattern here. Lightweight, check. To test the image quality, I took the camera on a training ride. I don't expect the Insta360 X3 to have the same image quality as this, but I do expect it to have the same image quality as this, or a phone. It is pretty out, that's for sure. And after a bunch of tests and rides, the image quality has not disappointed me. It looks great, especially when you compare it to the previous generation. The sensor size and the lenses have increased up to a half an inch. Previous generation, new generation. Notice anything else new? And you can really tell, especially in the shadows. The colors also look much better in my opinion. Here's the image straight out of the camera, and here's an image with color grade applied. Oh. Power was dropping. Can't slack off. Almost there. And now the fun part. Now, every 360 camera is prone to a little bit of distortion. You can see how the size of my head changes as it moves to the top of the frame. That's something you do have to be cautious of with with every 360 camera, not just this one. Another thing to look out for is stitching errors. See how things get a little wonky around the fingers on my right hand? Both of those issues can be solved with experience. Here's a shot from another ride where I position the camera a bit better so the stitching errors are less noticeable. It just takes some trial and error, and honestly, it's really easy to refine in the edit, which I will show you next, but first, there's one more image quality test to share. Hey, welcome back. I'm at the very end of the third interval. Doing okay, my heart rate's gone up a bit. Not crazy, but the sun has gone down, as you can see by the light I've turned on. So, perfect opportunity to test the low light capabilities of this camera. But first, I gotta finish this interval. It is a beautiful night. I'm excited to see how this looks on the camera. I hope it's catching everything. Let's take a moment to appreciate what this camera's doing. It's stabilizing a bouncy image in low light. Literally the worst case scenario for any camera. 
This shot is from the previous generation in similar lighting. This shot is the new X3. Look at the difference in the noise. It's literally night and day. Quick disclaimer, Insta360 did send me this unit for review. They are not paying me for this review. It's all my own opinion, so do with that what you will. No, it's not a magic camera. It's not gonna fix bad lighting for you. It's an action camera. So does it put itself in the same image quality as one of these and as my phone? Yes, passes image quality test. I am really glad that the image quality is good because this camera is really easy to use. Now I know I gave away the end to this section, but don't skip yet because I have a couple tips to help you get the most out of the camera. First up, always record in 360 mode. There's a bunch of hybrid modes like a me mode that follows you around. You can do some fun shots with that. There's also a super wide angle single lens shot, but I find the 360 mode the most helpful of all and obviously the most flexible. It's already got a quick start programmed into it right when you buy it. Literally all you have to do is press this button here. It'll start up and record in 360 mode. Most of the settings are already dialed in. The only thing I would change if I were you is take the sharpness down to low. Other than that, unless you're super picky, you're golden, you're good to go. At the end of your ride or whatever you're filming, you can load it into the app. You can do a lot of cool animations and things with it, but I find the best image quality comes out of the desktop app and they have improved the desktop app a lot. Very easy to use. You can add keyframes, change things around, Watch this. Whoa! Did all of that in the desktop app. At the end, when you export, don't forget to make sure that stabilization is turned on. And I like to export with H.265, higher quality, lower file size. But if you want the absolute best, use ProRes. But I warn you, those file sizes are going to be pretty big, just like my thighs. Okay, that was dumb. Evening. Hot one today. Yes. Let's talk audio. Audio is 50% of the equation, right? So this is how it sounds. Right now, you're listening to audio straight out of the camera. And right now, you're listening to audio recorded on this external microphone. Go ahead, drop it in the comments. Let me know what you think of the two. As you would expect, when I'm descending, you know, there's a lot of wind noise, so I find it is better to have the external mic. But if you're in a pretty quiet place without a lot of wind, you can probably get away with just the audio from the camera. But I'd be lying if I said I was totally satisfied with it. Luckily, there are a couple of really good workarounds. Option one, which is what I'm using right now, you can use a microphone that has its own storage device and then in post, sync the two up. Or option two, you can get the mic adapter and you can tie in a wireless mic directly to the camera. So you can use it without destroying the illusion of the 360 camera. I actually use it the entire time on my training ride that I shot earlier in this video. If I could make a wish to Insta360, it would be this. Please make an external mic that ties directly in with your cameras. Like if your cameras had a wireless transmitter for your mics, beautiful. Oh, it'd be awesome. Good audio. Uh, but if you add one of these, check. Now this angle is my favorite angle by far. I feel confident descending. It's nice while I'm climbing. I can talk to the camera. And it doesn't jiggle around too much. Unlike the Zwift shot, which uh, I showed you when I did the KOM attempt earlier. Man, that thing just bounces around a lot. And that's just because you have to pull the selfie stick out so far when you're on a bumpy road like these roads in LA it's just a losing battle but with this one selfie stick's much shorter not as bumpy great the other shot that I like to do is right here point of view shot now I'm using the other Insta360 the RS camera here but I actually like this one even more because you get a much wider field of view like the footage feels closer to what it actually feels like to ride. I'm not a great descender, but this footage makes me look at least mediocre. 
Now, there's another camera angle that's really popular. You'll see it on a bunch of these videos if you're watching a bunch of reviewers. Basically, you take the selfie stick that right now is attached to my handlebars, you move it right out front. It doesn't work really well on my bike because I have carbon handlebars and I don't really have anywhere to clamp to. It's on like my light mount. I'm always worried that it's gonna snap off. But if you really want that shot, I have some really good news for you. Insta360 makes a really special mount that goes on a normal bike and sticks it right out and it's got like a carbon rod. It's made for that shot. Like I said, my handlebars are not round, they're carbon. The mount just doesn't work with my bike, unfortunately. So I have it mounted to the handlebar here. If I'm being truthful, I actually like this mount a little bit better because it feels like I'm talking to somebody on a ride. Like, you know, we're out on a group ride together. I've got one more angle to show you. Super experimental. I haven't done it yet, and I still don't know if it's gonna work. But before that, will this be my ride or die? Kind of. I'm gonna pair it with the chest mount cam. Those two together, they're like peanut butter and jelly. I've got the 3D camera. I can get a lot of angles. Footage is good. I always have like a POV shot. I don't know, I'm gonna try it out for a while. There's a link in the description. I do get a bit of a kickback if you purchase it there. Thank you. And if you want some more camera angles, surprise ones still coming. But if you want even more, check out this video from the previous generation. I show a whole bunch of camera angles that work with this new camera. Let's try out this new angle. I will say this, don't try this at home. Insta360 did not know I was gonna do this. 